The first principle of medical ethics is autonomy. And autonomy is basically the concept that each patient has their own right uh, to access the medical system and make decisions for themselves. And some people include a fifth medical uh, ethics principle um, and I think I usually group it with autonomy and that is respect for persons. And respect for persons is quite self-explanatory but at the same time it essentially, it's essentially states that each person has uh, is their individual, is their own person and therefore has the right to access the medical system um, and essentially receive medical care. And by receiving this medical care, they have the right to make their own decisions. So for example, uh, say if a doctor um, is asking a patient to start chemotherapy, then the patient has the right to either accept or decline um, that therapy, uh, depending on what they want to do. And in some cases, autonomy can actually be bypassed. Uh, for example, if a person is um, suffering from a degenerative condition such as Alzheimer's and they lose their capacity to um, consent, then basically the doctor can bypass autonomy and make decisions um, for the patient if it's in an emergency scenario or consult with a family member of the patient um, in terms of a substitute decision maker um, or advanced power of attorney. Um, to make decisions on behalf of the patient such that they are ensured that they're making the best decisions in the best interests of the patient. So that's the first um, concept. The next principle of medical ethics is justice. And justice relates to access to the medical system. Um, it essentially means that all people, regardless of who they are, uh, have access to medical care. And once again, like autonomy, that's not always achievable. For example, um, if you are, for example, a, a migrant from another country and you don't speak English, then having an interpreter is helpful. But at the same time, if you aren't able to express um, how you truly feel, maybe something's lost in translation, or usually when family members uh, translate for a, a, a patient, um, family members might hide some details. So essentially your access to the um, medical system is affected because um, you're unable to make those decisions for yourself and that is once again an autonomy issue as well because you're not making uh, decisions for yourself. Um, justice can also have um, an effect geographically as well. For example, indigenous communities living out in remote and rural Australia usually uh, don't have the same access to medical care as uh, people in urban areas and therefore um, that's a justice issue because um, these people aren't able to access the same um, degree of medical care or same standard of medical care um, that, has seen, that has been seen in urban areas. So they're essentially forced to come to urban areas to seek medical care. The third concept um, of medical ethics is beneficence. And Beneficence is quite closely related to a fourth concept, concept which is non-maleficence. And the reason why these two are quite um, related to each other and they're actually sometimes grouped together in some texts is that they are essentially working in the best interest of the patient. So beneficence is acting for the good of the patient. And what that means is that in any medical procedure that is undertaken by a doctor or a nurse or any other health professional, it should be for the best of the patient. So for example, if um, the patient has a um, broken leg, then um, putting a cast on the patient is doing something for the good of the patient because you're preserving their um, bone and ensuring that it heals in the right way. Non-maleficence is closely related to this because 
it essentially states that you shouldn't do any harm to the patient. And this sometimes can be something that is a little um, not that well defined in its um, medical definition or in where it can be applied because harm is something that is usually weighed um, as a potential benefit or a, or a negative. Uh, and what I mean by that is that, say for example, um, if a person is going to have a uh, surgery for uh, the removal of a tumour, and say that tumour is in the brain, um, and for example that tumour is pressing on, let's say, uh, the parietal lobe and is impacting on their ability to perform certain functions and affects their somatosensory cortex, then you have two options. Say for example, not removing the tumour is going to cause the patient's death, but removing the tumour is also going to cause removal of the somatosensory cortex or part of the cortex to mean that they aren't going to have sensation in a particular part of the body. So that's a non-maleficent dilemma because essentially either way it's going to cause some harm to the patient, but it's your role as a medical practitioner to decide what is better for the patient and um, ensuring that you're uh, ensuring beneficence in that you're allowing for the patient to have the best outcome po possible but at the same time ensuring that there's non-maleficence as well in that you're ensuring the patient doesn't experience any um, harm due to the operation that you're um, conducting. So as a quick recap, the first principle of medical ethics, autonomy slash respect for persons, denotes that patients have rights and they have the right to make their own decisions regarding the treatment that they are going to be prescribed. Justice relates to the access to medical care that people have, uh, and that can be changed by geography or language barriers. Beneficence relates to acting in the good of the patient, so ensuring that any um, procedure that you do has a beneficial or actual worth to the patient in terms of their health. And lastly, non-maleficence is working um, such that the patient uh, does not experience any harm. So if a certain procedure has to be done, the benefits always outweigh the harm so that the patient can have a good recovery. So those are the four principles of medical ethics. Thanks for watching.